Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today I'm going to talk about a very interesting subject. It has to do with our emotions. Now when I was studying nutrition, I had mentioned earlier uh, in my opening tidbit for wisdom that I took 31 classes in nutrition. That's more than what you need for another master's degree. But I wanted to study both Eastern and Western approaches to nutrition. So I was taking various classes at various colleges and universities and so forth. One of the classes that I took was an Eastern approach to medicine and an Eastern approach to health and wellness. Now, they look at health and wellness very, very different than we do in, in the Western society. In Western society, we look at pieces of people. Like if they came into, if you came in, went into a doctor and you said, hey, I have a headache, you know, they'd pull out a pill and say, this is what you, you know, need to take for your headache. But if you were going to an Eastern doctor and you said you had a headache, he would want to look for the source. So he would be looking at you as a whole person and not a piece of a person. He would want to get to the root of the problem. Okay, so they look at the whole rather than the part. And so it becomes very powerful. Now, what they do look at in terms of emotions, they understand that emotions are what drive people and that negative emotions can have a negative effect on the body. And they've been able to look at different organs of the body and they've been able to see based on observation and um, research that different uh, negative, negative, negative emotions can affect different and certain organs. Now, before I get into some of these, uh, let me explain this. Whatever you decide to believe on this is perfectly fine. I'm just throwing out this information and adding it to your um, pot of information that you're gathering. <clears throat> but maybe some of you saw Mona Lisa's smile. And it's the story of a woman who is from the, the West Coast in California. And she goes to the East Coast and she's been hired as an art history teacher at Wellesley College. And in the 50s, it was a very, very conservative college, and it was an all-girls college. You know, in terms of art history, they studied the classics. But she wanted to broaden their learning, broaden what they knew. One day that I absolutely love in the movie, she takes the girls into this warehouse, and a Jackson Pollock painting has just come in. Now, if you're familiar with Jackson Pollock, Oftentimes, and I've heard parents say this, oh my gosh, you know, I, I have a child who could do this. And if you looked at any of the Olivia books, Olivia goes to an a, a art um, gallery and she sees a Jackson Pollock and little Olivia says in her mind, well, I can make and do one of those. And so she goes home and scribbles on the wall. But if you actually look at a Jackson Pollock, and this one that they show in the movie is astounding, its texture and its patterns and it's amazing. Now the girls' first reaction, because they were expecting to see like a Mona, uh, they were expecting to see like a Leonardo da Vinci or a Michelangelo, is, oh my gosh, this looks like, in their words, dead maggoty meat. And they said, please tell us you're not going to make us write a paper on this. And this is what the teacher says. She says, all I want you to do is consider it. I want you to look at it. I want you to observe it, and I want you to consider it. So what I'm saying to you when we go through these is, all I want you to do is consider it. They know from a book, Scientific Revolutions, that was written many years ago, that the people who are willing to consider different ideas are the most creative and the ha most happy people because they're looking at not just narrow vision, they're looking at wider vision. So giving you those, let me go through a few of the um, organs of the body. I'm not going to go through every one. And some of these are tied to idiomatic expressions that we have used in our lives. The first thing we're going to talk about is anger. And they believe that when a person is angry, that it can center in the right palm. You can actually feel this anger in the right palm. You'll, your, your hand will hurt. You'll want to rub it. You'll want to massage it. Sometimes people clench their fists like they're ready to go to battle. So they believe that anger is centered in the right palm. In terms of grief, they believe that grief is centered in the throat. And the term, I have a lump in my throat, that goes back to people feeling grief and they're feeling it in their throat. They're having a difficult time expressing themselves or talking or putting words together. Fear and panic. Fear and panic are sisters. 
and their fear is centered in the kidneys and panic is centered in the adrenals and the adrenals sit on top of the kidneys in our back and when you have these types of emotions you can have like a dull ache in your back and of course when we panic that increases our adrenal levels in our body and we get into a fight or flight mode so they said that that you can feel throughout your body but it is more centered in both the adrenals and the kidneys Another one is distrust, which is centered, they believe, in the backs of the knees. When people have feelings of distrust, their knees can actually hurt all of a sudden, out of nowhere. If they've never had a problem with their knees, all of a sudden they can have that feeling in their knees. They sit on the edge of their chair. They're ready to leave the, a situation that they, do not have, uh, that they do not trust. The heart is a really interesting one because the heart holds a possibility of all the negative emotions and it comes together to form despair. And when the heart feels despair, the heart feels broken, the heart feels attacked, the heart feels lost. And so they believe that when you have so many negative emotions that are swimming in your life, that it does affect your heart and the heart feels the despair. Anguish is centered in the lower intestines. When you're feeling a lot of anguish, and it can even cause a change in your bowels, that that is centered in the lower intestines. Shame is an interesting one. Um, shame is centered in the left ear. When people feel shame, it is usually subjects that they don't want to talk about, and so they shut those things down. They shut down their hearing. They shut down the possibility of other ideas because of the shame that they are feeling. Um, insecurity is centered in the stomach and oftentimes people who feel insecure, like one of the most difficult things that a lot of people have is to stand up in front of a group and talk. So they can feel butterflies in their stomach. It's an insecure feeling. Maybe it's something that they have to run to the bathroom because between the lower intestines where they're feeling um, the um, anguish of having to stand up and in the, the, um, in the stomach feeling those butterflies, oftentimes it can drive them to the bathroom. Uh, selfishness is in the backs of the heel. When we talk about people digging in their heels, it's um, the selfishness. It's either my way or the highway. I'm not changing, so they grind their heels in. Loss is centered in the lungs, and it's very much like grief, which is centered in the throat. People who feel a loss they can't catch their breath. They, they, the overwhelming feelings of loss and grief. Now the one that you really want to be a, a careful of is the liver. The liver holds hatred. And hatred is something that you don't want to keep inside you. It can then affect the adrenals and your kidneys. Hatred is one of those that actually can go through and affect all of the or other um, organs according to Eastern medicine and Eastern nutrition. Bile is produced by the liver. Bile is foul smelling, foul tasting. But what happens is that because the liver is the center of our primal, all of our primal emotions, you know, the bile is affected, everything is affected. And so you want to get rid of these things. You want to get rid of these negative emotions. So if you were to see a Western or an Eastern doctor or an Eastern practitioner, they would want to know about the negative things that are going on in your life and help you to release some of these um, negative emotions. In doing so, it doesn't mean that they're releasing your memory of it, they're re but they are releasing the memory, of, or not the memory of it, but they're releasing the emotion that's filled with it so that that is not causing you disease or depression or anxiety or all the other negative things that we've all experienced. So that's just 12. I actually talk about probably I think 18 um, and you can find the links at the bottom of this and thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>